all righty hello everybody and welcome to my youtube channel i am vidant pahel current 2021 my tax global link research intern at university El laval in quebec canada and in this video i'm gonna explain you about this my tax global link research internship program what are some of the points that one should look into and discuss and work on and how to apply so let's dive into it so one should visit this website that is mytax.ca um, you can find through the program and specifically we are looking for the global link research internship program whose application has just opened so global link research internship program is a three months that is a 12 week research internship program for undergraduate student from few countries, they have listed the name of eligible countries over here, which includes India. So if you're from India and if you're an undergraduate student, you're eligible to apply for this program. If you're selected, you get to work with a Canadian university on a research project for three months in the summer of 2022. So the application has opened for summer of 2022 and um, we'll look what other things to focus on. So one of the important point which you can see here is that the research internship it offers is in every discipline, almost every discipline, science and engineering, mathematics, humanities, social science, etc. There are 70 universities, 70 Canadian universities, which are the academic partner with MyTags, those who have listed the internship projects on this portal. Now let's look into student application. Now, okay, one, one more thing. MyTax is a prestigious research organization and everyone in Canada knows about this organization. And if you just do this research internship, it will be very valuable for your profile, especially if you're looking forward to do your graduate studies from a foreign country. So what's a MyTax internship? As I told, it's a 12 week research internship program uh, where you get to work with uh, faculties from Canadian organizations um, you it, the the uh, MyTax the organization sponsors you uh, to stay in Canada for three months along with other alliances like food uh, accommodation flights everything so everything is sponsored for you to get this experience so it's an amazing program so where do I start all right so review the eligible criteria, which we'll do shortly. And there are other things that you need for the application. So what is the eligible requirement for 2022? The first thing is that you should be at least 18 years of age at the time of application. You should be enrolled as a full-time student in an undergraduate or combined undergraduate master's program at an eligible institution. So even in India, there are a list of eligible institutions which you need to look into whether your university is in that list or not. Then uh, you should have at least one to three semesters remaining in your program as of fall 2022. What does this mean? So as of fall 2022, that is autumn, that is September of 2022. So next year, September, you should have one to three semesters remaining in your undergraduate program. And if that's a yes, then yes, you are eligible. You should meet the minimum grade requirement for your country, which we'll look shortly. Apply to minimum three and maximum of seven projects. So when you start your applications, MyTax portal will ask you to add the projects that you are interested into applying. And you should at least list three projects over there and maximum you can list seven projects. You should be fluent in oral and written English or French so your project will be either in English or French and you should be fluent in these languages they won't ask you for any examination or certification but that's just a declaration that you should give the last point is that be available to complete an internship lasting 12 consecutive weeks from May 1 to October 31 so next year since it's a summer internship program so between May and October you should be available at least for 12 weeks to go to Canada and pursue this research internship, right? 
Now let's look into the country specific requirements. So I am looking into India, assuming that my viewers for this video are mostly Indian students. So the partner that MyTex has in India is AICTE and Shastri Indo-Canadian Institute, that is SICI. Uh, you can look into the eligible institutions in India with this link. Now mostly all the organizations which are recognized by AICTE or SICI are eligible. Uh, in that case, most of the engineering institutions and science institutions are eligible that I know. But you can check that list for to be specific and uh, to be on the right track. Now, eligible applicants, again, it's the same Indian citizens, full time undergraduate students or combined undergraduate master's program with one to three semester remaining as of fall 2022, which I've already explained. Eligible disciplines, so AICT uh, recognizes engineering institutions, so all of them are eligible and SICI recognizes almost all the discipline of science, so you are eligible. Now, if you are an AICTE partnered institution, a student from that institution, then you should have at least 80% of cumulative grade point as of your application. Um, and if you are SICI student, a partner with that institution, you should have at least 70%. So make sure you convert your grade point average, that is GPA or some people call it CGPA into percentage and make sure it is greater than 80% in case of AICT and 70% in case of SICI. All right, that's the requirement. Now let's jump into the application. So I'll click on, now, now if I know that I'm eligible, I'll click on apply now which will take me to this application portal, um, which is opening, give it a minute. By the time, if you want some more tips, I've already also, also created another video on my tax research internship and my experience. Uh, you can click on the I button over here, uh, there somewhere on the top and visit that YouTube video where I have some more information and tip and tip and tricks for the MyTax internship program. But I'm also going to give you some more information here. All right. So this is the portal for 2022 student application. Uh, we have already seen these eligibility requirements. Now simply let's click on register. So I'll quickly register for let's say and um, a, yeah, my all right so i have accepted the uh, i've clicked on the activation link and activated my account now i'll Click on login, use the uh, account credentials to login into my application account. And once I log in, I can look for the application, All right? So here's my application. I'm allotted an application ID and it also shows the application status. Application hands which you on screen and we'll look into all of those one by one. So the first one is personal information. It asks me for my first name, my middle name if any and my family name. So make sure you mention your middle name because if you're an Indian citizen then your middle name is always there on your passport. So your details over here in the application must match your details passport. so make sure you do that if you don't have a passport it's totally fine it's not really required at the time of applying but it will be required when you um, if you're selected so make sure either you just apply for passport now itself so that you are in safe hands safe side uh, otherwise you can apply for passport after you are selected then you can enter your additional email, your gender, your date of birth, uh, the country or region where you enroll as full-time student. Uh, once you click on there, like if I say India, and also the preferred language, 
all right then it will ask you for passport validity uh, is your passport valid so they'll say do you have an active passport that is valid until january 2023 please note that you don't need a passport as i said you don't need a passport at the time of applying but if you're successful then you will be needing passport so they'll ask if you're successful then they'll ask you for passport details in february or somewhere around january so you must apply for a uh, passport at that time so as of now you can say no if you don't have a passport enter your citizenship uh, acknowledge agree to their terms and that's just the first section that was pretty straightforward then the second section is education so the home institution now this field should show the institution that you belong to so it is based on what you enter in your citizenship and um, after you complete your first section if you have entered all the details you will be able to see home institutions in this list so if you have entered india this will show this home institution uh, bar will show all the institutions in india that are partner with my tax and okay it's not loading as of now but yeah it will show all the institutions that you are elig eligible that are eligible and you can choose from there so once you enter your home institution you need to add your academic department so within institution which department do you belong to maybe department of computer science or information technology or electronics anything then the province or state so in india we have states so the state that your home institution belongs to the discipline category so this has a list of institutions uh, the categories like business life sciences computer sciences engineering and so on you can choose whichever you belong to uh, what are, what is your program type is it a full time are you a full time undergraduate or do you belong to a combined integrated undergraduate plus masters program so you can look into that and um, yeah finally the month and year of your graduation so what is your anticipated month and year of your graduation then you enter the grade uh, out of 100 so convert your gpa into out of 100 and enter it here uh, do you have an english or french proficiency exam if you do you can checklist that and enter the exam name and the score that you got if you don't that's not a problem so it's completely optional that was the education section next is the background and research interest section now this is one of the most important section which i believe because they are asking you what is your research background general description of what are your skills background knowledge research interest and experience and so on so don't keep it generalized that i have skills in this i am really interested into research be specific Whatever you're saying, try to justify that statement. Why do you think do you have research interest? Uh, what will, how will it benefit you in future? What's your research experience? How can you align your research experience with the projects that you're applying for? And try to create a good description of what you want to do and what your skills and interests are. The second section is notable achievements, maybe some awards or some hackathons like awards you have, some hackathons that you've won, uh, maybe some achievements in the college, some presentation competitions or so on. So make sure you list each and every achievement. You have got 100 words, maximum of 100 words for both the essays. So make sure you optimally use those 100 words to give most of the information about yourself. And try to keep it unique to you. That's that will make a difference don't keep it generalized like how everyone will do it keep it make it unique the next are some questions which they ask like do you know analyzing data or information in your ideal internship project how frequently would you be engaged so how do, frequently do you want to engage? finally there is a question have you completed any research outside of your degree coursework so for example have you maybe worked on worked as a research intern at some other place before so if yes you can provide that and then they will ask you for how many hours did you complete did you have your research experience and if uh, how you can describe that so this also is important so at time of my application i had some research experience which i entered here 
again you have 100 words make sure you optimally use this 100 words and this section is really important because if you have a previous research experience that will add an edge to your application the next section is experience with my tags uh, how, how you heard about my tags will you be available for 12 weeks in summer of 2022 for this internship you know to acknowledge that uh, make sure you contact your university or college and discuss this that you're applying for this internship and if selected will they allow you to go to Canada for three months in the summers uh, from May to October and uh, just make sure that it won't be a hindrance with your uh, program so declare that over here then comes the academic reference so you need to provide reference letter what is a reference letter you need to ask someone from your university or someone who has worked with you, some professor, to provide a reference letter for you saying that you are a good candidate and the experience that the professor had with you. So you can uh, enter the professor's detail, that is first name, last name and email address over here and click on invite. My tax portal will set the invitation email to them and they need to use the same portal to apply to send the uh, letter of recommendation to my tax. So it will be a blind process, right? Um, so make sure you contact some of your professors whom you already know um, and ask them for, uh, ask them if they can uh, give you a recommendation letter. And uh, there is some details that you need to follow. So you need at least one and at most two academic references. So minimum you need one, but it would be better if you get two. Uh, right and you can use this portal that's first option the second is if they are not able to use this portal or if your professor has some trouble submitting you can submit the letter behalf of them so you can simply take a pdf from them on their letterhead and upload it over here right so that's the second option finally comes the acknowledgement that is just you're declaring that you tend to apply for this internship and you are eligible, you fulfill all the eligible criteria, you apply to terms and conditions, to the program expectations and so on. You can simply click on yes, yes after reading the uh, statements. The last section, the last second section in this uh, application is the projects. So what internship projects are you willing to apply for? Right. So as I said earlier, you can apply for minimum three and maximum seven projects. So for this, go back to the top and you have this project bar over here. So let's open this project. Right. So once you open this project, there are a lot of projects there. I don't know many, many, many projects over here more than 2000 I guess so you, need, you can use some keywords okay 3010 projects here's this filter to filter your projects that you're looking for so maybe the first filter can be that you're looking for a project which is in English not in French uh, then maybe you can look for the fac uh, discipline so do you belong to computer science you can filter with the discipline and uh, what's your academic background so my academic background is again computer science, so I can I can go for that, and then I can search, right? It searches for me, and I then I can see you know video or something, and automatic vjing, electronic music, confirmed cases of COVID nineteen, DNA methylation and aging. So there's so many projects, right? Still so many searches, like thirty six projects. You can go thirty six project one by one. The other thing that you can do is, into. for example, if I want to apply for a project which is based on machine learning, then I can simply add machine learning as a keyword search and then search. Now I get 526 projects which are based on machine learning, like optimization of machine learning for smart mobility. You can see other details like who is the faculty supervisor for this project, which province this project is uh, in. What, which is the host institution, it's the Western University in London, Canada, the language and the preferred start date. You can also look for view details over here, right? Like what is the project description? 
what will be the student's role, what are the required skills, what is the project activities that one must carry out, carry out, carry out if selected, and if there is any additional information. So this way you can you know look into each project, um, make sure the project that you like, you note the project ID because that will be required in future, and so on. You should at least select seven and at least select three projects but you can maximum select seven projects so i'll suggest and recommend everyone to fill all the options that is select seven projects because you know what if you don't get so you will always have some more preference and backups right and even in this what i recommend is that make sure you go for two projects which are the top project like maybe from the top university and something which is of very popular so a lot of students will be applying for it so give it a chance but make sure you don't do that for all the projects if you apply for popular projects for all the seven slots that you have then that can be you know a little more competitive so make sure you select two top projects two medium projects and maybe two low projects which can act as safe projects by which i mean that maybe a university which is not that known and a project which is not that popular right that's about the project so if you have noted the project id we can go back to the application go to the my project section and here you can okay you can add projects from here simply from project section itself you can click on apply to add that project to your list so like this you can add seven projects to your application when you go back to application you, in the my project section you can see these projects might have added yeah these have been added now even in here once you add all the projects you need to order the project based on your preference like which project do you prefer more in case you are selected for two to three projects which one would you want to be finally selected into so you can rank them over here right which one do you prefer more over other and so on. Also, uh, there's another requirement. You must apply to three minimum projects, which we already discussed, but they should be also from three different provinces. So that means that out of seven projects that you have, you should have projects which are from three different provinces. Provinces are like states in Canada, like Ontario, Quebec, British Columbia, Alberta, and so on. So your project should be from the host universities which are from three different provinces the final section is the document section where there are two important documents the first one is your CV make sure you include most of the things in your CV you can submit your own CV or you can download the my tax template for your CV and fill that include the courses that you took the certification the experience um, the skills that you have, if publications, if any, uh, awards that you got, volunteering experience that you have, include everything that you have. Then you have transcripts. Also, one more thing, for a CV or resume, when you are uh, applying in a research internship, the page count doesn't matter. You might have heard a lot of students saying that uh, your CV should be only single page. Well, that's true when you're applying for industry, but when you're applying for research program, it's totally fine even if your CV is more than two or three pages. It should be, it should include everything. So don't put that criteria or barrier in your mind. Then comes to transcripts. Transcripts are the compilation of your, all the courses that you took in your university and the grades that you obtained. So um, either you can look for a detailed transcript from your college, you can demand from your college and they will uh, give you transcripts. Uh, the other thing that you can do that I did was I compiled all the mark sheets. So at the time of applying, I'd, I had four mark sheet of four semester from my college. I compiled all the four mark sheet into a single PDF and submitted it as, as a transcript. So my uh, mark sheet or grade should had the courses that I took and the grades that I obtained and the credits that those courses had so it fulfilled the criteria you can read this thing uh, on how they want the things to be and accordingly you can communicate with your home university in order to apply that make sure your transcripts are either in English or French with everything like all your documents should be either in English or French 
Well, that's about it. That's how you can apply to my tech school Global Link Research Internship Program. If you have any question, leave the question down in the comment. You can also uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn and I can help you with your application. If whatever I can do, I'll definitely help you with that. I can share my experience with how my internship was completed and so on. One important benefit that one, might, one must highlight is that if you get this internship and if you complete this internship you are eligible for 15,000 Canadian dollars of grant for your graduate study what what it means is that if you are alumni of this internship so you are invited to apply for graduate programs in Canada after your bachelor's maybe for master's or for PhD and my tax will fund you with 15,000 Canadian dollars for your master's program and that's a huge benefit so make sure don't miss this chance make sure you apply for this program and give your best good luck and like share and subscribe to my like like share this video and subscribe to my channel for now that's that's information i had uh, if i have some more information maybe i'll make some more videos stay tuned and that's it bye